feel like I can use my experience of emotional loneliness and disconnectedness and childhood issues, whatever it might be, I can be helpful, not only to myself, but to others. Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a place for you to know you matter, draw close to God, and live your calling. I'm Lindy Wynn, and it's a blessing to be with you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this gathering of Mamas in Spirit. Before starting to record, I just waited for some planes and helicopters to go by. I don't live too far from a little airport, and all of these podcasts right now are either being recorded long distance or at quite a distance, (laughs) like three times, three times the legal limit, I should say that. Hi, Lindy. Way over there. I know, I know. I have a dear, dear sister in spirit, Kelly Barons, with me today to really reveal her heart and life to you in such a vulnerable and authentic way. And I just know we're going to be blessed beyond even our understanding. So thank you, Kelly, for being here. And everyone, let's take a moment to remember that we are all deeply tied in the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit is with us right now. We're mamas in spirit, sisters in the Holy Spirit. And let's center ourselves and invite God into our hearts. Dearest Lord, you bless us with one another. You gift us with companionship, and you gift us with that companionship for the most joy-filled moments and the most difficult moments and seasons in our lives. And Lord, that is what this is all about, and that's one of the things that you're really all about, is us being able to be completely transparent, completely open, completely ourselves, and to be completely loved, loved by you and one another. So help this to be a safe place for everyone listening, for me, for Kelly, to truly reveal who we are so you can truly reveal who you are. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kelly, can you share a little bit about you with everyone listening? I can. I repeat the gratitude of being here with you, seeing your smiley face, sunglasses on, all geared up. (laughs) And in your beautiful backyard, it's very peaceful and welcoming. So Lindy and I have known each other for uh, oh, over a decade now, and we met at Cornerstone, and we realized at the same table that we were sisters. We share a college. We both went to Santa Clara, and just an immediate love for you, and then we just grew beyond that with other experiences in life. And my gratitude for you is, I can't measure. I'm so blessed. Um, Not only are you a sister in spirit, but you've just really helped guide me through my difficulties. So I considered myself pretty, you know, rational, laid back person. And I think I wore that as part of my mask. I just, I wanted to look peaceful. I wanted to look like everything was all right when deep down there were definitely some inconsistencies with that. And I've learned that I tried to protect my heart. And that just comes from life experience when I was very young and I lost my father in a terrible accident. And my survival skills based on just trying to get through it on my own, not asking for help, and that's just not okay. That's not okay. And you find these layers in your life that build up, and that was something I had to come to terms with and learn because other things in my life. I've had, my husband has had an ongoing brain tumor. I just try to not ask for help and mask that. Everything's fine. Whatever life circumstances came my way, I think that that's how I handled it. And so then I had this layering effect. And for some reason, I acquired this ringing in my ears, which is called tinnitus. And this chronic condition caused me great distress and I had severe anxiety that really took over my whole body. I don't know how to explain it. If you know what anxiety feels like on a deep level, it's just when you feel joy through your body, that's one feeling. When you feel anxious through your body, that's another debilitating but equally like dispersed 
in your heart and in your mind and your your whole being. So I isolated myself. I didn't know how to help myself. I went through every doctor that could help me get through this. And what it wasn't touching all through the audio experiences I had through audiologists, and I wore this ear mechanism in my ear to desensitize my tinnitus. And what I wasn't really getting at was that the anxiety was creating this ringing. As I said, anxiety throughout your whole body is going to manifest itself where it will. And for me, my ears took me into under the covers in my bed. And it was very dark. It was very dark. So I sought some assistance with how am I going to help my anxiety. And I got on the wrong track with some Xanax. That wasn't the heart of what I needed, but that was prescribed. And it just... It just really escalated to the point where, I mean, I wasn't taking more than the prescribed dose, but some of it was mismanaged and it got to a place and Lindy was there to witness. She came over to my house and there I was, (laughs) happy as can be after I wrecked my car and in total denial. But there she was and God brought her to my house at the right moment to be an angel in my life. And it was just a collection of examples of support and love on this journey of mine to get at the heart of my healing and distress. Yes. And thank you for sharing all of that. And it's very moving to hear you share all of it because like you said before, you were guarded. And I always think of you as a Jackie O, Kelly. So listeners know like Kelly is polished. Everything about you, your home, your car, your your everything is polished. And so for you to be sharing this story, if listeners can imagine having it together seemingly that much and being the most polished person I really know to then this moment that you pointed to. And that was really your rock bottom in this experience. And I want to talk just a moment about that so that everyone knows. So Kelly and I did see each other during this kind of, it was almost like a year long spiral down. And I realized looking back that Kelly and I saw each other when Kelly was doing better. (laughs) And we definitely didn't see each other on Kelly's really difficult days because that's when you were under the covers or other things were unfolding, but you were really alone during those days, which I did not know. So this one day I got this voicemail from you, Kelly, and there was something about it that was off. And I I wouldn't have been able to put my finger exactly on what it was, but I was supposed to go on a bike ride with Brian and he was chatting too long with with my neighbor across the street. And so I said, hey, I'm going to start our bike ride, but I'm going to go by Kelly's house, meet me there. And you guys, I never do this. This is not something that I typically do where I just show up at someone's house and see what's going on. But there was something, it was like a God prompting deep in my heart and deep in my soul saying, go check on Kelly. So I go and I knock on the door and Kelly's husband, Reinhardt, opens the door and I say, is Kelly okay? And I could just tell. And he probably said something like, no, not really. And he said, do you want to come see her? And I said, yes. And, And basically you were gone at that point. You were in a totally different space and place. But it was almost like coming up on a friend in the mid to late afternoon that was kind of toasty and endearing because you were toasty, but very, very worrisome. And then it came out that you had been in a car accident and you could kind of remember that there was this paperwork. So we were able to look at the paperwork from it and whatnot. And praise God, everyone was okay and you were okay. But basically what came from this was very clearly that you needed help. And I want to say, because I did not ask Kelly to be in this podcast for her to say that I'm an angel. And this part makes me really emotional. But I've said this to Kelly is that there's such a beauty of being invited in to all moments of another's life, including the most difficult. That gives us a place of belonging and complete trust 
and intimacy that we're not just walking with each other when we can go out to dinner and enjoy each other's company or when we can go on a walk by the ocean, but we're also going to walk with each other when things are really difficult. And the fact that Kelly and Reinhardt, and I mean, Reinhardt doesn't even know me that well. Now he knows me better, (laughs) for sure. (laughs) But he didn't even know me that well. And so for you guys to invite me into your life like that has been a great blessing in my life and a great gift in my life. And so that day and that moment started a journey together at first, but really your journey, Kelly, and your journey with God to look for how you could receive help. And I really want to say this to everyone listening, because I think this is so important is Kelly was ready to receive help in the sense that you were completely humble. You were like putty in our hands. You were like, (laughs) I trust you guys. And another girlfriend we ended up calling who you're close with, and she came over and That began the journey to find from this place of rock bottom where you could go to receive the help that you really needed. Right. I just recently experienced through a very good friend of mine who lost her son, the deep, deep connection of witnessing someone, just the Holy Spirit just crack your heart open. And those are authentic moments that, as you said, we get invited into because there is an invitation there. And... It's really, there's so much beauty in that. And I appreciate you saying that because I understand that it, as much as I was struggling, but you were right there with me in my suffering and recognizing that. And that's a beauty of true friendship. And I use a angel analogy because you and Sharon McCandless, oh, you just bent over researching every possibility of where I would benefit the most from in my journey and healing. And I really believe that there's that guidance with the people that know you and and see your vulnerability, but also just we're connected in spirit. And I feel that that was what took me to the right place. And it was clearly where I needed to go. Yes. And then, so you went there, you went to a place in Arizona And then you needed to let people in that you really weren't in relation. You left all of us and left that cell phone behind. Yeah, and I did. Can you share with us about that journey? Oh, yeah. So the place where I went is in Arizona. It's in the desert, pretty far out at a place called the Meadows. And it's really renowned for people that need help in all different ways types of situation. What brings everybody there, and this is a common denominator that we all talked about, was there is just something cracked. And it became evident that if you had a mental breakdown, if you're an alcoholic, if you have anger issues, if there's just so many people there with different issues, but the common denominator there that everyone was broken. And that's where we started. And when I arrived, my mom was fortunate that she was able to pick me up at the airport. She lives in Arizona. So it was really, really hard for her to take me to a place. She was just shocked that it got to this level. And like you, she didn't know. But I said, Mom, I I need to do this. This is the right place. She said, oh, well, I know this place. This is where Tiger Woods went. Or (laughs) it's a celebrity place. And I said, well, yeah, I I need to get some help. So. I was like deer in the headlights, so scared and so disoriented. But the program was so wonderful. They just get you right into, you have group therapy, you have this place to go, you have this psychiatrist to see, you need to do yoga every day, you need to work on the uh, every aspect of mental health within and physically and mentally. And so it's nice to have a schedule. We start with that because you just need to, you need to get back on track. And the best way to do that is just, just you need to have a plan. And every, everyone's place was different, but the plan was the same. We need to just start talking from the very beginning about your origin of family. And I had no idea how impactful that is. That is how we learn to survive in this world. We learn our skills and how we react to almost every situation. And if we can identify that and acknowledge that, we have this just great, great 
growth. I think that's something we all realized at the Meadows, that we all could use this type of therapy, every one of us. And yes, we're broken, but to understand who you are and where you came from is really important for all of us to think about. My mother, when my father died, she wasn't emotionally available for me. And that's not a judgment call. It's just that's how she reacted to my father's untimely and horrific passing and she was unable to connect with us and so as a result that's what I learned to protect myself and not reach out and it's okay and I'm okay and that's okay until it's not okay. So the Meadows is a collection oh my gosh I can't even tell the crazy situation the people are amazing people from the military and heirs from Paris women and men from all over the world and so it was really really awesome to be with broken people because you learn to be vulnerable I had to learn to be vulnerable by sharing and these people that I met it was easy to to say what was on your heart and why you were there because they had a story too and on that level we connected uber driver from new york i mean i was just like i can't even tell you just like this became your family you'd pull up a chair and then your story start because you need to tell your story and so in our groups we had our it was a turquoise group we all shared our stories and oh they're heartbreaking but we all had to find some connection with everyone's story as they told it and we had to share we went around the room and you were not exempt and it was uh, for a while it was like kind of it's exhausting to share your feelings every day we did an emotional roll call and i learned that i was disconnected with my emotions and how do you feel today it's like <sighs> Really? <laughs> do you feel joy? Do you feel grief? Do you feel anger? Do you, but you know what? This is a really, really good practice because a lot of times I would, you know, how are you feeling? Okay, I'm fine. Well, it's really a good idea to say what that is. Identify what that is. It's okay to say you're angry. It's okay to say you're feeling grief. My husband the other day, and he came for a week and joined me and went through all the lessons and teachings that I learned. There was a situation where he felt shame, and he came right out and said it. I feel shameful for what I said or how I reacted, and I was grateful for knowing what that is you're feeling, and so we can connect. You can state your feelings without judgment and just acknowledge it and move on. It might be fruitful to have a conversation later about whatever that emotion you need to discuss. And that's good too. But that's very healing for me just to get behind that and get in touch with myself. And now I'm asking my family members to get on board. So <laughs> how are you feeling, Helena? <laughs> what about it, Joseph? And they kind of look at me aside. But then I think that that is important to know what they're feeling, not just generally, but more specific. Yes. And I love what you're saying because you were already very contemplative and very prayerful and in the silence a lot, which can be very introspective. But yet there was this detachment between that and this very kind of real nitty gritty. How am I feeling? What am I doing? What am I carrying with me? What am I struggling? And I think that's really important for all of us to listen to and to hear because even in our relationships with God, which is the ultimate relationship, just like our relationships with everyone else, we can be in relationship, we can spend time together, we can do all these things that seem right, but yet if we're not truly bringing ourselves as we are to the table, the relationship can only go so deep, even our relationship with ourselves. But there's that deep integration. God wants all of us. God wants all of us. And not just the things that are pretty. Yeah. Or that we judge are pretty. God probably thinks it's beautiful when we give everything. That's probably us at our prettiest when we're judging us at our <laughs> our ugliest <laughs> per se. So it sounds like you were starting to learn to bring your whole self. Right. And when you're a hot mess you've got to like, what is it about this mess that I can like evaluate? And I guess in prior to that, it was just, it seemed like a lump sum of feelings without direction. 
And one of the, the wonderful things I learned at the Meadows regarding emotions is that you feel them in your body. For instance, if you feel shame, you feel that in your body. You, it, you wear it. And it's good to recognize feelings in your body. But also the benefits of the uh, shame can be humility. There are beautiful benefits to every single emotion, whether it's anger or grief or shame, whatever it might be, the difficult emotions. The happy and the joy, we all, we all, that, that, that's easy stuff. That We feel great. I feel joyful. And you wear that in your body too. And that's a wonderful thing. But sometimes our body gets it first. And then it's like, it's that gut thing. And then recognizing that emotion comes second. And there is a space in there, once you learn how to react to your emotions, there's a space where you can make decisions. And that's a great thing. Yes. Can you share how you do that now? Yes. I think, for instance, we're quick to react. For instance, if you're feeling grief, you feel this grief in your body. And there's a moment that gives you an opening for discernment in terms of what you're going to say and what you need to ask God to guide you. And I think that there's that lovely little time where if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling shameful, and you know it, then your reaction can have more guidance and purpose. And it gives you control in some ways, but that control is purposeful and mindful. It feels right to know before you react and feel the spirit within your your reaction to whatever it might be. It reminds me of the serenity prayer and so much we don't have control over, but we do have control over our response. And so you're controlling that response. And then by going to the meadows and engaging in this very vulnerable, transparent experience, it reminds me of like, I don't know how else to put this, but like nakedness you basically are being stripped away of all of these masks of anything that you clutched onto that kept you from your own rawness, really. How did that transform you? And how has that transformed your relationships with God and with others? In terms of my relationship with God, I feel, especially during this time of COVID also, I feel like I have a mini retreat in my heart. It's in my backyard now (laughs) (laughs) and in my house. And that's wonderful too, that I can go to this place of peace. And I know now I have a roadmap of how to be in that peaceful spot. And there's so many things that go into that, that gratitude is probably one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. And in my case, I have a lot to be grateful for. Being grateful for just the things that you've been gifted to in your life is one thing. But being gifted with the knowledge that every moment in your day can be like a prayerful moment and a reflective moment, no matter what you're doing and how difficult things can be. And I learned that the messier and harder it got, the better I understand my relationship, especially with the Holy Spirit, that that's where the good stuff comes. And not to protect myself from it or avoid it, but to have guidelines now to understand it and to make a purpose to my life in a way that I never expected. I feel like I can use my experience of emotional loneliness and disconnectedness and childhood issues, whatever it might be, I can be helpful, not only to myself, but to others. And uh, I feel so grateful that I can use some wisdom to benefit, hopefully to encourage without judgment, like you do and other wonderful people in my life to be grateful. Yes, thank you. And you do that for me. And it's really moving that you're sharing all of this publicly. It's an offering. It's a gift. Going back to the beginning of the podcast and when you shared about your dad, because that was such a significant, unexpected trauma in your life. Your life changed in a moment. What has that healing been like for you to attend to that in a totally different way? What has that been like for you to completely attend to that experience at the soul level? Right. 
part of the cornerstone of the program at the Meadows is called Survivors, and you spend one week with a very small group and a trauma healing coach, basically. And we go back to those traumatic childhood moments. And it's addressed in a way that my father was fictitiously brought into the room and sat across from me in a chair. She opened the door, closed the door. She said, your dad is here now. And we had a conversation. And that was so powerful for me. I buried my emotions, obviously. So crying was such a gift to let all that out. And maybe the disappointments that my life without him and why didn't he look both ways when he turned the corner and and was hit by a train. I mean, it's just like I got a lot of that out. And that was the great experience for me and also my mom and her disattachment. And I think this has opened my heart to realize that I can talk to myself as as a younger person now and look back and see myself sitting in the swing set in my backyard after hearing my dad had died and my mom just fell apart. And I can see myself so clearly and I can go back and encourage my younger self to know that you're loved and don't be afraid and go talk to your mom or it's okay that you didn't and just love yourself as who you are because I am that little girl a lot but I know I know how to talk to her now and how to give reassurance and love and that's been transformative also for me that sounds so healing and so beautiful and I love the empathy and compassion that you have shown yourself and learn to show yourself and your younger self because I'm going to imagine for all of us that we carry all kinds of things with us that we are not empathetic to ourselves about and someone Kelly and I both know Nancy Lomibau she is a therapist and she's in one of the very first probably episode five or so of Mamas and Spirit And she talks about self-compassion and how she practices that every day. And I love this idea of you practicing self-compassion and empathy with your younger self. And essentially, it sounds like giving yourself what you needed that you didn't receive at the time, but giving that to yourself as an adult. And I remember as a young person, I went on a plane. I was had to have at least been a teenager because I was alone and got to talking to the lady next to me in the seat that was like an angel like you're talking about I have no idea who she was I've never spoken to her again just one of those random plain conversations and she said sometimes you have to be your own mother Mm -hmm. and that always stayed with me I'm thinking she probably said to me that 25 years ago and to be able to mother ourselves in a sense like that and show that all encompassing empathy and love because that's Christ's love for us. Mm -hmm. That's God's love for us. But yet we can be the hardest on ourselves and expect ourselves to hold it together and be okay more than we would ever expect of anybody else. And it reminds me of journaling. And I know some people listening probably journal. God bless you. Because journaling is like, it's so raw. It's like, this is what I think. This is what I feel. And God wants all of that. Journaling is a big bang for your mental health, for sure. And all these things just take practice. At, at first, whether I was journaling or expressing myself, just it takes time to allow yourself to relax and really explore your emotions and feelings and... It's important to get it out, and repression causes a lot of suffering in people. And I feel uh, just a lot more clarity, and I think clarity just opens up so many things for me. I see things more as who I truly am. I can express who I truly am and explain myself to my own children now. I think this is who I am, and this is why I am, and this is why I react this way. And it gives them something to hold on to in terms of just just not out there as a general sort of argument or feeling or whatever I'm saying. It's just this comes from this place and this is why. And it just gives them clarity. It just makes sense. Yes. And that reminds me that you had to tell your children about this. They all knew you went to the Meadows. (laughs) Adult children. (laughs) Young adult children. Young adult. 
And so that transparency and having to be open with them about this is who I am. This was my experience. This is where I got to. And this is where I'm going to get help. Yeah. And now implementing that, like you're saying, with your family. What a blessing. What a blessing. I'm the family therapist now. Sometimes they <laughs> roll their eyes at me, but I said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Kelly, thank you so much for sharing your story. And what I'm really hearing from you is that you authentically went through yourself to the depths of your own experiences and really just who you are to heal and to let God into every nook and cranny and with such great humility. And God has renewed and transformed you in the Holy Spirit. And You've got a new lease on life, sister. I do. I do. And when difficult things happen to us, can't blame the world or it's not fair or why me, but there's just the depth of knowing yourself and looking for lessons in these moments of vulnerability are true moments uh, with the Holy Spirit. And I think that that's what God has emphasized in all the scriptures. And that's where we can all connect and find deeper meaning is really true. Kelly, thank you so much for all of us and for sharing your heart so openly. Would you like to close us in prayer? Sure. God, grant us a serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for that beautiful prayer. That prayer is part of so many different programs and 12-step programs too. It's one that I live by and have lived by for many, many years. And so thank you for sharing that. And thank you everyone for being here. Please share this podcast and Kelly's beautiful story with anyone you think that it can help. Such a beautiful time, even though a very difficult time that we're in, it's a beautiful time and invitation for us to grow in the greater silence and stillness in our lives in relationship with God and relationship and understanding with ourselves and to attend to whatever's going on inside of us at the soul level. And know I'm here to support you in that. You can always reach out at mamasinspirit at gmail.com. Please like, subscribe, and share Mamas in Spirit with others. And you can find many, many faith-filled podcasts at mamasinspirit.com as well as on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, etc. And please come join the community on Facebook and Instagram. I never knew that social media could be a life-giving place. And I've realized from following other people who just fill my soul and my spirit and doing stuff with Mamas in Spirit, God is very much alive there too, and we can use it for God's glory. So cannot wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.